I forgot to mention on all of these, just like our uh, other sensei have been talking about all week, you have to connect with the guy before you can affect the guy. Unless, well, there's some effects at distance, but we're not into the spooky stuff today, all right? So we hook up with the guy. If there's a lot of loose, sloppy slack between us, then it doesn't matter if I'm doing this, right? It doesn't affect him much. So uh, either contract your arms or back out just a little bit or step in just a little bit until you can begin to feel a connection between them. And once there's that connection, maintain it and watch how moving myself moves him. Uh, what's the guy that wrote the power, uh, the Principles of Power book? Was it Steve Perlman? Yes. It yeah. Appropriate. Good book. Uh, he talks about in this book the, uh, the goal of all martial arts, really the underlying theme is to gain power for ourselves by, by practicing enough to gain exquisite control of yourself. Mm. You want to retain such exquisite control of yourself that it's impossible for them to control you. All right. So I thought that was a real, a real interesting take on uh, a lot of times we think I'm going to grab him and control him and bust him and do this and that. I'm working to control myself here, right? I get a connection with him and watch what doing myself does to him, right? So um, there has to be a connection there. Uh, the next of his Uchikomi uh, games was the sumo stomp, right? You might need a little bit of extra room, so you might back out to create a connection, all right? And you pick a leg up and set it down. Pick a leg up and set it down. Maintain your posture. Don't be a pushover for me. All right. Um, this thing is so powerful, it's dragging him off of his base. It's hard for me. I'm probably also pulling a little too much here. All right. So, uh, so play the sumo stomp to induce some motion into him and see what you can fit to that motion. You do a couple of hundred of them like this and a couple of hundred of them like this and uh, a couple of hundred of them like this and so on down the line. You accumulate a ton of reps. What is it about this, ex this set of random weird exercises besides the fact that you're doing thousands of reps that made Hirano Magic. Yeah, components of it, right? Uh, there was a guy named Rudolf Laban, who was a uh, a post-war uh, ergonomist and a uh, a dance uh, master. He uh, taught dance and he taught uh, rhythm. He called it choroidics which was sort of an artistic look at uh, kinetics or kinesiology. But uh, one of the outcomes of this choroidic study that he did was people are not uh, orthogonal. There's no way to uh, move straight forward. For instance, if I take him and lean him forward, lean kind of slowly, and lean, 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 his center's going down as he's trying to go forward, right? If he goes even slower, there comes a point where he starts to get a little bit of twist, right? So trying to go forward, he's got components here and he's got components here, right? Uh, when I put um, that on him, I'm not just waving him <coughs> back and forth. This is not the only frequency that I'm looking at. He's going up and down and left and right, forward and twisting, and there's all these components of motion that you're learning to read. <coughs> okay, so he's learning to read the, uh, the many different components of this guy's frequency. 
What else? Why, why else is this weird variety of exercises uh, magical? He's teaching himself sensitivity for his own balance. Yes. He's reading his own frequencies. Right? What he appears to me to have done is divided the chaos of combat, of, uh, of like sport combat, into this sort of wave, some, there's this sort of wave in there, and there's that sort of wave, and there's that sort of wave going on, and there's that sort of wave, right? If we grab each other and struggle for it, yeah, right? This sort of thing that looks like what you see in a competition, especially with beginners, right? Mm -hmm. If we do that in slow motion, there's some hip out and a stomp, and my head slings over here, and I'm forward and backward. So I've got all these different frequency components going on in my own body. It's creating weirdness in his body that I'm trying to match to. So uh, one of the demonstrations that one of Hirano's students did that I thought was especially uh, informative was he took a uke and he was just in my opinion abusive to this uke. I mean he smashed this guy and I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you can watch the video but uh, I like him too much. He, he was flattering this guy but he uh, he hooked up with him and looked and looked and looked and looked and splattered. Right? and showed it again and then he did the uh, one, two, three, splatter him. Right? And then he did the hips out and the sumo stomp and then they just went crazy and he smashed him. Because at some point during that craziness he was able to recognize where his puzzle piece fit into the other guy's puzzle piece and splattered him. Right? And that's what we're, that's what we're after in um, in much of our rondori and our uchikomi is to figure out how my weirdness fits with his so that I'll wind up on top. <coughs> a lot of times we do uchikomis here, right? The assumption here, if I can do a uchikomi there, is that when we're struggling, eventually uh, these two feet move together. And I recognize that and stepped into where it fit. Uh, and that's a good way to teach it. Hirano's was another way of teaching it based on that frequency and that frequency and that one and that one and so on. Okay. Play whatever part of that you like for a few minutes and then we'll switch to his kata and see how, how that tool uh, explores the same ideas. In fact, I've read that it's a sign of genius if you can, uh, yeah, look at me. <coughs> if, if you can uh, look at things from the other guy's perspective, uh, maybe it's just a sign of maturity or something, but when you, can, uh, when you can look at a situation or a dynamic from this point of view and then put that in the back of your mind and look at the thing from this point of view, you get more, uh, more input. We've been looking at this thing from Tori's point of view. What about from Uke's, right? So uh, you've got like a forward roll and a back fall, which is most of what you do for everything in Judo, right? If I get here and I do this to him, and this to him, and this to him, and I bust him, I'm worried about getting my puzzle piece fit and now it's his turn to figure out how to fit the correct ukemi to the part of the wave that he's in. Right? So he's getting practice uh, knowing what is the ukemi answer when he's here and when he's here and when he's here and so on. That's, that's kind of cool. I just realized that watching somebody. Um, the next thing in this uh, kata where we're drawing waves. We, uh, yesterday he had stepped back and I had tried this and he 
absolutely locked me out, right? With the crunched abs and the iron bars, and he won't let me in. So I gesture that way against his iron bars. Does that look familiar? It's what we were just doing. And I gesture that way, and he clamped down on me. Come on, don't be a push hard. Yeah, be that guy, right? I try that thing and he's clamped down. And I get this guy. So in each of the succeeding motions, he has read my book up to that point and uh, comes up with some bright idea as an answer. So how's he going to stop me from joking him with my shoulders and catching this? He pulls it back a little bit and does jigo tie where I can't reach <coughs> it. All right. Also we said the kata goes in a sequence of light, almost non-existent resistance, uh, medium resistance, heavy resistance. We're back to the light resistance, so we're doing a light resistance <coughs> jigo time, right? So step both feet back, put uh, some fairly light, hunker down a little bit. There you go. All right. I've got to get him in motion. Right? Right? My, my thighs might not do this one today. <laughs> this is uh, Suri Komigoshi. From here. Right? The butt out to the side creates some of this in him and some of this in him. Right? And I'm reading that until I find him balanced. And then I turn around, put a little bit of tension here and stomp and all of a sudden yeah it worked he's uh he's up all right yesterday we uh we talked about shomenate where he comes in and i put a little bit of that on him and then i push him when his feet balance out right and we we saw that a bunch right here he gets his jigo tie and just a touch of iron bars here there you go all right I get here and here and here. He's starting back and forth. If I can create, uh, take up the slack here and stomp down under him when he gets even. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Cool. <laughs> All right. And I'm not having to kneel down two feet to work my sore thighs. That's kind of neat. I like it. So. Uh, in Shomenate, we were knocking the guy back and forth this way and then pushing him here. So we're switching from this plane to that, the 90 degrees. Here we're switching from this plane to here. Right? And instead of doing that with my arms, I'm doing it with a stomp. Right? Take the slack out and stomp in the middle. All right, play that and see how you like it. See if you can get the guy popped up on his toes by entering with a little bit of up and stomping. Big picture. He does this thing and he sails in kind of quietly and does this. It's like he's settling and spinning. He stomps and it splashes. So you can sort of imagine a wave coming in. It seems like it might have swirled a little bit and subsided, but there's still some motion under it. You know what you want to mean? I haven't done it once. It feels like that sort of snap the towel kind of kazushi thing to yeah. do. Or like that kind of thing. Yeah. Only it's it's done vertical. Vertical. Yeah. I've got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought I kind of Instead of doing the exact cut of thing, you can decompose it uh, even further. So something, spread your feet out a little bit. Something has gotten him doing this. Right when his feet even out there, 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 there's a weakness. Like Shomenate or Osotogari or 
Say or any of those. Right? So, as he is approaching center, I get here, take out the slice, insert my hip a little bit, and turn my feet off and back on. And that uh, little plyometric thing uh, gives him a boost and stretches him out onto your side. Now, so that wave is also awesome. mm -hmm. and it's not. Um, okay, so, you're doing so, so I'm, I'm so going sort of back. Something has made me oscillate. Let's go slower. Now, do I have to get pure timing, or once I start getting this up, can I sort of lock it weightless for a little bit? Or because I I need to do this sort of part slowly, because otherwise it's going to be crap. So we're done. Start early, right? So, so, so I might here, start when you're over here, as I'm here and try to in, get to here. You take your first couple of steps so that you can do your stomp and push up. One of those. So it is a sort of a pure time thing. But just there, there. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to play with one or two more. I've worked with him the longest, so we sort of know how we act. <laughs> Jigo tie, a little bit more crunch, a little bit more iron bar here. Okay. That weren't no miracle, but let's try it again. Part of the reason it was not a miracle is because I was damping out the waveform. Right? So I snatch away and I lay into him. There he was. All right. Is that all right? Step up, buddy. So uh, trying to go slow and damp this thing out makes for a sloppy uchimata, right? I pulled him forward. I push him back and down. And as he springs up, I catch this leg. Can't do it slow. Play that and see how you like it. Keep in mind, I'm not uh, talking him in the nuts. <laughs> Let's uh, rewind here. Y'all step over there and let me preach on this some more. I got in a hurry on this one. Beginners always uh, back kick the guy in the kajukis. <laughs> no good. Right. No good. Plus, we're doing this thing from like a horse stance. So be careful of that. This is a leg technique, not a hip technique. So I'm not chucking him in the nuts. I'm trying to catch this wave and stretch this leg so that that one skates. All right? Crush her down and in here, and then lift this leg. When I crush this, this foot never skates. Right? So when we get here, and she's hunkered down, I want to pull away, reach in and clamp her on this leg. I yes. And then set it free and spring it. Ignore me. Easy as. Huh? Sorry, forget it. Nick was uh, giving me some advice. Okay. Exactly. Wrong. <laughs> that was doing it right. Uh oh. That one. And uh, I've got one more that I want to play. This uh, Tayatoshi is very similar to something that Bob Ray showed a seminar or two ago that he said that he got from Wim Ruska who happens to be Tokyo Hirano's student. All right. So I've got that guy again. All right. He's defensive. He's locked me out. He's crunched his abs. Right. And I can't get anything working. Step out here, pulling him onto this foot. And then release him. And when he goes back neutral, put your foot down in the middle. This is like the most magical Tayatoshi I have ever seen. It is amazing. <clears throat> right? So he's got me locked out and I can't do diddly. I've pulled him over here onto this leg long enough to get close to in line. I let him recover. 
until he is close to center and right at that moment switch 90 degrees. <coughs> Let's uh, throw it another direction. He's, oh, I can't do anything with this eight hole. Amazing, huh? Play that. I walk in to where he'll let me. Right? Lock me up. Now, yeah, there we go. I get as close to the line as I can, pulling you here. When I release that spring and you write your posture, mm -hmm. it's right there. So when you drag him here, when you let that spring go and he writes himself, there's a weakness right in the middle. So you switch from fighting him on this line to fighting him on this line. So when I have him here, when I'm, when I'm like this and I have him here, I relax this. Yes. Okay. And when, when I fix my posture, you change 90 degrees. I, uh, I even tried to step out of it. I couldn't step around it. The, the thing about... <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to step around it. It didn't work. The thing like, about absolute around. resistance is you can't step. Yeah. <laughs> Not easily. I, I tried. I moved a little, but it wasn't enough. Right. So I still got That just changes the angle from there to... That's yeah, pretty much what happened. <laughs> Yame! So this guy was the most winningest judo guy in history. So, so says the articles that I've read said that he won 4,300 matches in six years, 700 and something matches a year uh, using this technology. When people ask him, uh, how did you do it? He starts dancing and people start ignoring him. Right? <coughs> Have you all seen that before? Yeah, we've had some real magic men in the past in this organization and people avoided them. It was like the craziest thing I've ever seen because you would think that folks would gather around the magic men, but they avoided them just because it was so uncomfortable in your head and uh, they were marginalized. Uh, I wanted to leave you with a question. <coughs> on the poster thing, it says this is a summer clinic. Uh, I think on the Facebook, they might have called it a summer budo intensive or something like this. I want to know is what we're doing a clinic or a seminar? Is there a difference or is it just a semantic thing? Y'all have any? To me a clinic is like a sterile thing where you go and uh, and they fix a specific problem. Right? A seminar from the, the language roots is a place where you go to get a seed and plant it into your practice so that it will grow. Uh, so I, I personally think this whole weekend would be useless if it were a clinic, right? Because then we would uh, have to figure out everybody's one problem and then fix it. But uh, like I told my son, your job is to pick one or two things and put them into your practice when you leave. All right? Or it could be a symposium because we're just going to lounge around the room. <laughs> That's right. Thank you all for playing with me.